Hey guys, so I just went to the theater and watched Jordan Peele's Nope. Nope. And let me tell you guys, this motherfucker is three for three. He's three for three. Get out. Us. Nope. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I am thinking about making a video essay. I am thinking about making a video essay because I really want to fucking talk about the fucking meat and potatoes of this movie, right? So I went in pretty blind. I saw the trailer, but I didn't know shit about it. Like I didn't see the promotional photos, which would have gave me a little more context, right? So I went in dry. I went in very dry. I'm watching this movie. The first 20 minutes, I'm like, what the hell is this? And if you're not black, good fucking luck. You will not get like, I want to say like at least 40% of the humor. There are so many things that will like go over your head. And I grew up in the fucking suburbs. So a few things took me a minute. I'm not going to fucking lie. The, f the fuck I'm gonna lie for but a few things took me and I was like wait a minute <laughs> oh okay <laughs> like it took me a second I was like oh, okay okay I get it right and then to pick up on some of the slang it's like mm. so let me just give a brief overview of everything and then I'll put a timestamp of when I talk about what I really want this video to be about um Kiki Palmer's acting now I can't say it was bad it was very theatrical for me right and I went to the theater with my sister and she was like, oh, that's because you've been watching her shows and her movies since she was a little kid. So it feels like it's your cousin. So it kind of feels like you're watching your cousin play a role. And it's like, LMAO, you'll never stop being my cousin. So I see you as, haha, my cousin playing a role. Other than, hey, I see you as whatever the fuck her name was in the movie. Because I forgot. Not important. OJ, the main character, when, he, when his dad died, that was fucking crazy. That was fucking crazy. I did not like, that was the saddest fucking thing I've seen in a while. And like, you know, it, it takes a lot of skill to get me emotionally invested that early on in the movie. It takes a lot of skill to do that. Okay, I've decided I'm gonna make a video essay. I feel like I have to. So um, tomorrow I'll have a video essay out. This is just an overview of my thoughts about the movie. Tomorrow I'll have a video essay out, I, I think, I think. Um, so if you have me on Twitter, you already saw my overview of, you know, what I thought about it. I thought the comedy was decent enough. I give this movie overall an 8 or a 9 out of 10. A strong 8 or a weak 9 out of 10. I thought it was really fucking good. And I thought it was really fucking powerful. I thought the message it had was really powerful. And again, I'm still shifting through what I think about it because I'm not entirely sure. So I read somewhere that Jordan Peele said that this movie is about um, the human tendency to make everything into a spectacle, right? And we get this with um, our main characters, OJ, his little sister, um, the Hispanic guy from Best Buy, <laughs> trying to catch this creature in the sky on video. Well, this, what they assume is a flying saucer on video. They're trying to make it big. They're trying to make money. The OJ and his sister, at least, they're trying to make a spectacle out of it, pretty much. And then we get the Asian guy who was in the movie Burning that I made a video about. So in that movie, he played this character named Ben. Since I don't remember anybody's name except OJ's, we're going to call the Asian guy Ben. <laughs> okay. And so Ben makes a spectacle out of this creature too, right? We see him gather up some townspeople to show them, hey, look, I'm going to feed a horse to this creature in front of your very eyes. And I am not too certain about what the themes of this movie are. Please, Please feel free to tell me what you got from the movie. Because what I got from it, the themes that I got from it, were these underlying messages that you should respect nature. Not just nature as in like, oh, plants, whatever, but animals. I think there, there was tones and like messages of the fact that we as humans are so fragile and so stupid when it comes to animals that we oftentimes forget to respect them. Something kind of like that. That's what I got. That's what I got. And this was highlighted in the biggest way possible during the Gordy scene. My favorite scene in the fucking movie. It was so good. The Gordy chapter, because each animal gets its own chapter, which is saying something, right? There's no OJ chapter. There's no Ben, the Asian guy. There's no chapter for him. There's only chapters for the animals in this movie. And then... Each animal is in one way or another being used as a prop. Our main characters live on this ranch, Hollywood Horses, where all of their animals are bred to be props for Hollywood movies, right? And then this is highlighted perfectly in the Gordy segment. That segment took the movie from being, ooh, okay, this is good, to this is fucking great. And that's when the theme became clear to me, right? Though, you know, the theme is what I, 
I'm just saying, this is the theme I got, right? I don't know if I'm correct in this. I do need to go see it again, and I'm going to watch it one more time. But, like, at the very least, I'm going to watch it again. But the Gordy scene, to me, just was the nail in the coffin about what I assume the theme to be, about the biggest message I got out of this movie, to respect animals and stop treating them like props and, and stop, yeah, making a spectacle out of what comes natural to animals, pretty much, right? We see that um, in the beginning of the movie, the Hollywood actresses just walk up to the horse, Lucky, right? Walk up to him and stare him straight in the eye. And the horse responds accordingly, like a wild animal. Now, he's been tamed, he's been trained, and whatever, right? Da, 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 right? And you wouldn't expect him to throw a fit, but he does. Because it comes natural to him, because he's an animal. The horse is an animal. And to not respect the fact that it's an animal that um, operates on instinct, despite being trained, despite whatever humans try to do to the animal, the animal will always be an animal and it needs to be respected as such, right? Lucky responds to being stared in the eye like an animal because Lucky's a horse, right? And so OJ finds out that with this extraterrestrial being, not to stare it in the eye pretty much because it's an animal and its animalistic nature should be respected. And that's exactly what he does. He respects the fact that this is a strong animal, just like the horse, just like Lucky. This is a strong animal, much stronger than me. I cannot help the fact that I am in its presence. You know, it's territorial. It's hungry. I cannot help the fact that I am subject to this animal right now because it's very much so more powerful than me. So I'm not going to look at it. And then he lives, right? And so for me, this all just came to this like amalgamation, this big, magnificent epiphany during the Gordy scene. And I love this scene for so many reasons. The reason why I want to make a video essay about it is because it just means so much. There's so many layers to it, right? Here's this movie about aliens, about looking up in the sky, right? About the unknown, right? Like about how scary the unknown is. You know, there's that Tumblr post. There are things that we don't know. There are things we know that we don't know. And there are things that we don't even know that we don't even know. And apparently the things that you don't even know you don't even know is the scariest, right? But no, 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 no. It is the things that you know are coming. That scene had me on the edge of my fucking seat. The last 40 minutes of the movie did too. Like, wow, talk about a master fucking plan. Talk about raising the stakes. Talk, talk about emotional investment. They had me there. They really did have me there. I was, I was sold. I was sold. I was like on the edge of my seat, like eyes glued to the screen. But back to the Gordy scene, which I have to fucking make. I have to make a video essay about because it's so fucking epic and it blew this movie out of the ballpark for me so we have the asian guy talk about gordy right um kiki palmer's character she's like oh yeah like weren't you on the set of gordy like aren't you the kid actor and he's like yeah it was a mate yeah like the tragedy that happened oh my gosh like <laughs> talk about a fucking cocktail party story <laughs> yeah people died it was crazy lol <laughs> and it was the most traumatic thing you could ever fucking think of right you could ever ponder. That was so fucking traumatic for him. So traumatic, right? And he's sitting here with a smile on his face talking about it like it's talking about that time you watched, I don't know, the Cubs win the World Series or something. I don't know. He was talking about it as if it was just a everyday, like, miracle. Like, oh my God, I watched a deer get hit by a car and stand up and just prance off as if it wasn't hurt. Talk about, like, amazing. Talk about having nine lives. Oh my God, that's kind of how he talks about it. But in reality, it's this thing that has these deep-rooted effects on his character. And that's another thing I need you guys' help with. How do you think that affected his character in the end of the series? Because we see he is the first one making this big spectacle. Well, not the first one, but he... It's implied that he knew about the alien first. That's what I got out of it. That's how I interpreted the events of the story. He knew about the alien first, and he decided to feed the horse Lucky to this alien. You know, he wasn't scared... He wasn't freaked out. He was just ready to offer up Lucky the Horse to this alien that we find out isn't a flying saucer. It's not a machine. It's an animal. The alien, the, 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 the saucer itself is an animal. And like I think the theme is, all animals are to be respected for their wild animalistic nature. And like humans should ex expect them to behave like animals and not try and make props out of them, right? We even get like the imagery of the fake horse used as a literal prop, right? So I think, I think I'm pretty, pretty much on the nail with my interpretation of the theme. I think it does have something to do with us learning to respect animals for being animals.
and not trying to bend every single thing to our will, especially an animal that's bigger and stronger than us. And the Gordy scene just fucking highlights this so much. And obviously the animals are the biggest part of this movie, right? Which is why each chapter is named after the respective animal, right? We have the ghost chapter, Lucky, uh, Gordy, <laughs> and then the alien that they, I guess, call Jean Jacket. I don't know. But I just really want to dive into this fucking Gordy scene because the unknown is scary. But what is scarier as an audience member is something you know could fucking happen in real life, right? Because the premise of the movie is this, what if, what if aliens, what if, oh my gosh, that would be so scary. What if, what if, what if, what if? And then you get the Gordy scene and it drags you back to reality of things that actually fucking happen. People use animals as props all the time. How many music videos have you seen where there's a big ass snake or a tiger or a lion or an, I don't fucking know, an alligator or some shit, right? And it's this trained and tamed animal. You never know when those things are going to snap. So you have to respect them and not attempt to use them as props because the nature of using something as a prop is to quite literally make a spectacle out of it, right? How many times have you seen people who don't belong to a culture wear like the Indian, the, well, the Native American war hats, right? How many times have you seen them taking something from a different culture, making a spectacle out of it to profit from it? And I feel like that ties into the theme too. And that's why I felt a sense of, good you know i was like all right cool when the alien ignored lucky the horse and when lucky the horse refused to leave the protective plastic box to feed the alien and the alien was like fuck this i'm gonna eat these people because who are you to make a spectacle out of an animal doing a natural animal thing eating right who are you to make a spectacle out of that that's kind of what i got from it and then for you to sacrifice another living thing for your spectacle Absolutely not. And so I think it was condemning that, right? Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think because I'm really malleable with my opinion on this movie because I'm still processing it. It was really, really, really good. And just the terror, like I'm going to keep bringing it up because I'm so stuck on it. I'm so fixated. It brought the movie to greatness, the Gordy scene. Because here is an example of something that would fucking happen in real life. Something so irritating. You get this gaudy, pomp and circumstance um, sitcom, right? The show, right? Here are the opportunistic white parents with their adopted Asian child and their pet monkey. And it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Gordy. Look what I got you. You know, there's the cheesy jokes. There's the colors, you know, the set. Oh my God, the fucking set. And the set becomes this honky-dory, laugh-out-loud playtime thing to this massacre site just like with the attempted viewing of the alien eating the horse right something that's supposed to be a fun kind of celebration there's music there's the pomp and circumstance the gaudiness and then it turns into again a massacre site and this i feel like the theme just pokes out like a sore thumb they are literally making a spectacle out of gordy they are not respecting his animalistic nature he's an animal he's not a person they have him wearing clothes doing a skit performing he's a wild animal and so when he behaves as such much like lucky in the beginning when the hollywood actresses look lucky in the eye and he snaps you're like oh, because you never know when the wild animal is going to snap much like that gordy snaps and i don't even want to say snaps he just behaves in an animalistic way which is to be expected it's an animal and so it's looked at as this big tragedy. It's, oh my God, it's horrible. And oh my God, talk about terrifying. Talk about terrifying, right? And I just love the cinematography, right? There's not a bad shot in this movie, but I loved how that was shot. That was shot so freaking good, right? You never see Gordy in his prop form performing Gordy. You don't see him performing as he's being spectacleized, right? You don't see him performing. You only see Gordy when he snaps. You only see him when he's had enough and he starts behaving like an animal. And I thought that was a brilliant directive decision. You don't see prop Gordy. You don't see prop Gordy. You see Gordy for who he really is. You don't get to see him while they're all laughing. Happy birthday, Gordy. Happy birthday, Gordy. You don't see all of that. But what you do see is him acting like an animal. Now, it's violent. It's scary. It's crazy. And then we even see the victim, um, the female who played his sister ben the asian guy who played his sister on the sitcom gordy ripped her face off he killed the parents and he ripped the sister's face off in the blink of an eye 
And I just think it's interesting that she wears this whole thing, this veil in front of her face to prevent herself from being made a spectacle while sitting in the bleachers, in the stands, trying to watch a spectacle of something else being eaten, basically brutalized, right? So I don't know if there's like a real contrast there or not, but I think that's interesting. And it's so freaking terrifying when Gordy notices Ben under the table, right when he makes that first eye contact with him, you're like, oh shit, it's over. But obviously he survived. So, you know, you don't know what to expect. How did he survive this? How did he survive this? And then Gordy approaches him and attempts to fist bump him. Something he was most likely trained to do, right? He's probably trained to fist bump. And so he was done behaving like an animal. That was my interpretation. That's what I got from that. He was done. He was frustrated. He enacted that frustration. And he was ready to go, you know, to be calm. He was ready. And so he approaches Ben. And he gets shot right before Ben's eyes. And you know this traumatizes him. So what I want to know is, what do you guys think? Like, how do you think that, um, how do you think that influenced Ben? You know, the Asian guy, I don't know his name again. How do you think that, that influenced him in the future? How do you think what happened with him and Gordy affected him deciding to feed the animal, the, the alien animal, not have any, like, resentment for it, make a spectacle out of the animal, right? Like, he should know firsthand to respect animals. He should know firsthand. So maybe it was this thing where, like, the Gordy thing taught him to spectacleize tragic events like that, such as the horse being eaten by the alien creature. But isn't that in human nature? So that's confusing. Like, I don't know what they're trying to say with that. But moving on from the Gordy thing, um, just the amount of detail, right? Like a key, the key that fell into the dad's eye, or was it a quarter? It's a quarter. We see that, you know, the context of that is it's the alien animal, like regurgitating things that aren't human flesh or animal flesh that it's eaten. So we get context for that. Cause you're like, how the fuck did the dad die? Or it's like, what? Heh. <laughs> Like, a quarter fell out of the sky? <laughs> what? So I like that, and I like how you kind of have to pay attention to the details. Like, with the Gordy thing, the shoe that was standing upright, that, you know, Ben now has as a keepsake or whatever, uh, memorabilia from being on the Gordy set. And, like, oh my god, like, I just can't stop gushing about that scene, because it's like, there's so much you can pull from that. There's so much you can take from it. So what I'm taking so far is the known is scarier than the fucking unknown. Because the scenes with, with the aliens and stuff, yeah, that was creepy. But the Gordy shit was straight up terrifying. Aliens were creepy. Like, where are these horses running to? You know, that was creepy. The Gordy thing made me shake. Because we already know people are using animals as props. The circus, music videos, snakes, rabbits, jaguars, uh, tigers, bears, lions. Oh my. <laughs> um, just people are using animals as props all the time. So the Gordy thing is something that quite literally has probably happened a few times. Like, I should look it up. I'm pretty sure it's happened a few times. And it's like, we just have not learned our lessons. We have not learned our lessons yet. Um, one of my favorite singers right now is Chloe Bailey. She had a tiger in her music video, her latest music video. There's a fucking tiger in it. And I saw the behind the scenes. And yeah, it's a real tiger. And it's like, no matter how much you train or tame an animal, at the end of the day, it will behave like an animal. And you never know when. And you have to respect that of them. Because they are animals. They're not a prop. They're not a design. They're not, a, you know what I mean? They're not there for you to make do what you want. They're there because they exist and they're animals and they have their own agency and they work on instinct themselves. So get out of their way, respect them. Just be two mammals sharing a planet. You don't have to bend one to your will because you're a, a, a person, you know, with a conscience and you're, you're a human, you know? But yeah, in closing, um, please come back, subscribe, comment, and like because I'm gonna make a Gordy freaking video essay because I have to. I have to. And like, I don't know if I'm gonna go into like the whole prop thing because that has to be one of the themes because they even have like a legit prop horse that the little sister steals and tricks the alien animal with the alien animal eats the prop horse <laughs> it's really not happy and those last 40 minutes the, the the plan the grand plan at the end so good so tense i was so engaged the hispanic character i was so i, I loved his character it was great it was funny like it was actually funny um kiki palmer i wasn't really laughing that much but with him with him i was laughing he's funny that was good humor. Don't know why the white guy who gets the perfect shot, you know, that uh, white guy who uses non-electric cameras, uh, him, his death was pointless. I don't understand it. And on the topics of death, OJ should have died. Glad he didn't. And for imagery's sake, 
how fucking brilliant was that ending right in the beginning we get this whole oh the first person ever filmed was a black man riding a horse and the last thing we see in the movie is a black man riding a horse and it looks the same as the frame fucking brilliant excellent it was it was so good i was like oh my god way to bring it full circle way to bring it full circle and something i like that jordan peele movies do is they don't waste time on things that don't move the plot forward they don't waste time on things that you know they don't waste too much time trying to make you laugh or trying to make you feel a certain thing the movie says you should feel sad now and then you do it doesn't take long to build that up it just that's how the actors and the directing is that's just how good it is and nothing is in the movie just for shits and giggles nothing is just in there right everything relates to something and i love when movies do that because it just means that i'm not wasting my time it's a two-hour movie and i'm paying attention to shit and it pays off at the end and i love when that happens and that should always happen but anyways please make sure you comment leave a comment tell me what you thought of this movie tell me any themes you thought of what themes did you see in this movie because that is what i'm really interested in i want to know what messages people got from this movie since jordan peele's movies are so ambiguous but at the same time they're not you know you can get a lot from his movies you can get so much from his movies but at the same time Everything you can get from it is connected to this bigger theme. And I'm trying to see if the bigger theme is this, the fact that you should respect animals and their, their natural behavior and their tendency to act as animals. You know, I'm trying to see if they're, they're, that is the biggest theme and that all of the sub themes are related to that one. So just let me know what you thought about the, the movie and let me know if you caught that theme, the one that I explained that I got out of it. And let me know if you caught another one. And let me know, let me hear about your sub themes and let me hear about your theories and let me hear about you, the Easter eggs you saw and let me just, you know, let me hear it all. Talk to me. <laughs> Comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, I'm going to be posting a Gordy video essay soon, very, very soon, because Gordy really made the movie that bitch for me. Gordy, that was the scene. That was the scene. And just tell me, how do you think that uh, aided in the characterization of the Asian guy, the Ben guy, right? The, like, like, let me know. What do you, what do you think about that? And, like, I wasn't saying the parents deserve to be, like, mauled by Gordy if it came across like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, like, this is something that's wrong. Using an animal as a prop in a show, in a movie, in a music video, it's wrong. It is. And it may seem benign, but it's, it's really not. And it's kind of odd to me when people act, like, so surprised when an animal acts in an animal way, right? You cannot predict an animal most times. You cannot predict an animal. So when Ben, the Asian guy, when he d tried to make a spectacle out of the alien eating Lucky the horse, which I'm fucking glad Lucky didn't leave that box, he was pre pretending to know what the, what the alien was going to do next. You can't do that with animals. These are wild animals. And so when the animal instead attacks the people, I was like, okay, yeah, as an animal does. I expected that. I, okay, it caught me a little off guard, not going to lie. Well... Maybe it didn't. Maybe I knew they were going to die because when the animal was hesitating to get the horse, I already knew like something more catastrophic is going to happen. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can't just fucking play God like that. You can't pretend to be a step ahead of a wild animal. You can't pretend to know what a wild animal is going to do. I don't know. I just saw so many fucking themes in this movie. I just love the fuck out of this movie. I'm going to watch it again next Tuesday because it's $5 on Tuesday. So far for themes, we got the human tendency to spectacleize things. We got um, respecting animals nature and just let me know if you like saw anything else if you caught anything else and let me know what your favorite scene was and right make sure you comment like and subscribe don't forget it people always forget and don't forget to come back soon maybe tomorrow maybe the next day maybe the next day maybe the next day maybe the day after that but make sure you come back for that gordy video essay because i'm gonna put my whole bussy into it because that scene just really was cinema to me anyways that's it bye bye subscribe don't forget like the video don't forget bye just in case I didn't say it, humor is a little cheesy, but, you know, pretty good, especially with the Hispanic guy. Emotional weight, pretty good, really, really good. Intensity, really good. Overall movie rating, strong 8, weak 9 out of 10. Really, really good. Jordan Peele ranking, Get Out is number 1, Us is number 2, and Nope is number 3, which isn't me saying Nope is a bad movie or, you know, whatever, but there's just so much richness in Us and in Get Out. It's just so rich. It's so rich. Whereas this one is rich too in an existential kind of way, I guess. And like they all three movies have this kind of nagging tone to it, right? Like it feels like it's trying to tell you not to do something. But overall, all the movies are really, really good above average for me. And this one just happens to be the lowest on that list, but still really good.